Welcome everyone, welcome to Gothi Roundtable with uh, myself, Cadaver Kelly and DJ Carnivorous. Welcome, welcome, this is Gothi Roundtable and we'll be uh, talking random goth discussions. Today we'll be introducing our beautiful project and uh, ourselves. Kelly, do you want to introduce yourself? I am Cadaver Kelly. I'm an underground music journalist. I focus in wave, post-punk, death rock, goth rock, um, some uh, other underground alternative genres like synth pop, uh, some psychobilly, some punk. Um, but I, I'm mostly known for being a goth YouTuber. I have a YouTube channel, Cadaver Kelly. Uh, I'm Cadaver Kelly on all social media platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. My website's cadaverkelly.com. After we're done recording this live session here, or after we're done streaming, um, the recording of this should be going up on my YouTube channel. So if anyone wants to watch this back later, that's where we're going to be uploading these. So Caroline? I guess next up is uh, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline Carnivorous from Norway. Um, I guess you could say I'm a blogger. I've been blogging for a few years now about golf stuff. Uh, also been moderating and still am different golf communities all over right now. It's a lot on Discord and Facebook. People probably know me like from social media. And the past year, I've also been DJing as DJ Carnivorous, and that's been really fun. Other than that, I just love going to events, especially Wave Boutique Treffen. I've been going there since 2013, and I miss it so much right now. Understandable. Understandable. <clears throat> And Dave, it's your Twitch channel, but I will be uploading this to my YouTube channel later on. So for my YouTube subscribers, let them know who you are. <laughs> okay, all right. Yep, um, I'm uh, Dave, also known as uh, all kinds of names across the web on uh, Reddit. I'm known as Dave Soiker from uh, the Specimen Song. And uh, yeah, otherwise on here on Twitch, Father Eldridge. That's uh, that's about it where you can find me. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm uh, an old dude who uh, enjoys uh, goth music since way back, way back. And uh, Dave, you're actually you're the admin for r slash goth and gothy discord. So for any of my subscribers who are watching this on playback, uh, Dave uh, does a lot of work with organizing online goth communities. Yes, you, you could say I do that, uh, actually, now that you say it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I managed that place since the past five, six years, something like that, either way, a uh, while. Uh, I also manage uh, the Gothic Discord, which is uh, the official Argoth Discord. It's a lovely place, highly recommended. <laughs> Gothi Discord is such a wonderful online community. And for those watching, uh, we do have uh, three different countries here with our co-hosts. I'm in the United States, Dave's in Sweden, Caroline's in Norway. So I'm a lot further away than you two, different time zone. But I am uh, pretty engaged in my local scene when we do have events around here. I live in uh, Pittsburgh in, in Pennsylvania, but I also travel to other places in the US to check out the goth scene, hoping to check out more of the global community. And I've been connected to Dave and Caroline for uh, quite a long time now, uh, old school gothy, gothy gang. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It's been... God, how many years have it been? It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, tell the uh, audience a little bit about what we plan on doing here with uh, this discussion talk show here, Gothy Roundtable. Um, I know there's some um, wonderful goth talk content out there online. There's um, shows like Cemetery Confessions and... Um, uh, for a while, Obscura Undead was doing their um, subculture Evening shock. Old. They were doing like um, talk well. content. And that stuff uh, really went deep on some important topics. The Cemetery Confessions mm -hmm. episodes are al always like very highly academic. Uh, we're not going to be that. We're going to be like very unpolished here, a uh, very casual coffee talk kind of a uh, talk show. For those in the US, I've been saying we're like the view for goths. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yes, indeed. 
I know most of the people who are probably watching this right now are already people in the goth community, but there might be some people who aren't in the goth community that are watching this, uh, maybe friends and family of ours, or maybe people who are just now discovering the goth subculture and are trying to learn. So maybe each of us could talk a little bit about what the goth subculture means in our own words and suggest some resources for learning for anyone who wants to get up to speed so they can uh, be a little more on the same page when they watch future episodes of Gothy Roundtable. Dave, you want to start off? All right, all right, I'll start off with that. Um, all right, so uh, what is goth? The age-old question that uh, all of us are sick and tired of talking about, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's its absolute simplest form. It's a fan of a certain type of music, like, let's say a metalhead. We enjoy a type of music, if we're gonna talk super basic here. Then there is a whole lot to it as well. But uh, in its simplest form, that's what it is. Just uh, someone who enjoy some types of music, like Susan Banshee's Let's First of All, or why not... Marsh Violet's one of my all-time favorites. Someone who enjoyed goth rock or very similar genres, like genres. Now I'm speaking Swinglish. That's not good. Swinglish? Yes, <laughs> the best, right? <laughs> I'm gonna try not to speak nor of English. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that, that's just the simplest, absolute simplest form. Then there's a whole charade of more to it. Yeah, because the subculture is built around the music, and when you have that, that will bring a lot of other different elements within it, too. Like, a lot of people are very focused on the look. And yes, a bunch of us do this. Some of us look like Dave. Like, it's just an extra fun thing that has come out of, you know, how the band members look. And, at, like, way back when Goth started, it came from punk. So people were just mixing that with, like, the fashion of the 80s. And it was very working class. So people were thrifting and DIYing and all that. So and that's where that pretty much came from. And I have to say, like, no matter what, like anything a goth wears like we don't own that like another subculture or normal people will probably have that thing like even pikes platform boots corsets black lipstick crazy colored hair like all of that like just because you wear that like it doesn't mean that you are a goth so it's like an extra add-on if you like just for fun as for like resources, just join Gothy Discord. Like <laughs> my Gothy Discord. That's a good suggestion though. Great place to learn. Yeah, because yeah. in there we have tons of pins. A lot of them will be links to uh, Kelly's videos and website. A lot of them. <laughs> Some of them to my blog, because obviously we've explained all this stuff millions. I'm glad we can be a service. Yeah, we we had to do this so many times. Oh, yeah, God, but yes. we thought, you know, with this first episode <laughs> that we would, like, intro it a little bit. The the age-old question, what is goth? The question that I've had to answer a million and one times. The Well, what is goth rock? That's the same uh, video or article or the evolution of goth music or goth 101. That's the thing that I've had to do over and over and over again. And it is a full-fledged subculture. And it... it did grow out of this music movement where, you know, the music is the center of our uh, subculture. And um, of course, like other subcultures, like uh, like punk or, or metal, uh, I would say more like punk, um, there's, it, it kind of reaches all aspects of, of life because you become so ingrained into this community. It, like the people who stick around for a very long time. If you're someone who gets into it at a young age and you're involved um, through adulthood, like we all have been, you get to a point where a lot of your friends and the people that you surround yourself with are also involved going to these same events and you're all starting to like influence each other, bounce ideas off of each other. Um, we do have our own kind of ways of like interacting our own like inside jokes our own like ways that we kind of like um 
dress and our yeah. our own like ways that we dance uh, at the club um there's just like all these things that kind of like grow out of it and it, it's all growing out of us kind of like coming together to congregate over this music scene um so it's i it's it's something pretty magical caroline like you were saying with the um like the looks, the fashion, the clothes everyone wears. Nowadays, I, I would say um, it's not as clear cut, the differences between kind of like alternative subcultures, where I feel like at, at one time it was a little easier to distinguish between uh, maybe like a punk and a metalhead and a goth. And um, there's there's less and less of, of that, especially a lot of people buy their stuff online now. I, I know in the early days in the 80s, there was probably more like uh, people dressed more eclectically and stuff like that. But by like the 90s, 2000s, there was a very distinct like uh, goth look, death rock look, punk look, metalhead look. But nowadays it seems like you could see someone dressed in like you know dark alternative attire you don't know if they're uh into metal or goth or punk or or what their deal is so uh yeah it can be uh hard but um dressing up in uh similar ways it's kind of a way for other goths to somewhat identify each other and be like hey you know <laughs> I I D dress sometimes up can... in a similar way, like <laughs> in our goth police t-shirts. <laughs> this is totally not planned, people. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Well, uh, and that's kind of the idea behind things like uh, like battle jackets, battle vests, stuff like that, where you sew all your favorite like band patches and stuff like that onto your clothes. The idea is that you go out to shows and events and stuff, and you can find the people who like the same bands as you or have the same taste as you, you see like certain bands or, um, you know, cer certain patches or pins or whatever that someone's wearing. And you might be able to strike up a conversation like, oh, you, you like that band. I love that band too. I saw them live last year. I think uh, there's, there's a place for um, like signifiers and like fashion and appearance and stuff. I do think that's like a part of it. Uh, it's, I think it's, I think it's an effect though, and not the cause. I, I like to say like music is the cause and, and like clothes and dance and like art and all this other stuff that comes along with it is the effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting, uh, way how, uh, how the different dark alternative subcultures have just kind of, kind of merged in a uh, fashion sense but still being its own part, uh, how should I say, it? its own part of the cake. Let's just go with that. That's a weird yeah, way, but like, yeah. Especially with like female presenting at least metal heads, like they will look often just like a goth person. Exactly. And like, you just don't know. Um, yeah, to an extent, I think there are certain looks that I don't often see outside of goth, like the Susie Sue eyes, the Susie Sue eye makeup. Um, when someone's like clearly has the, the like Susie look going on, um, I'm very, sh I would be very shocked if someone with that makeup is not actually a goth. Um, yeah. it's just such a distinctive look, but then there you go. They're, they're emulating, um, you know, uh, a musician who was, uh, very influential in the early days of goth. Uh, so it's a sub it's a subculture with like music at the heart of it. Music is the is the base from which everything uh, grows out of in goth. Um, and yeah, gothy discord is such a great resource for beginners. So if anyone um, is thinking about joining gothy discord, uh, they do have an application process to get in where you have to answer a few questions. But if you don't know that much about goth, that's okay. They have um, a, a limited channel um, where you can kind of like learn more. And once you learn up on it, then they give you access to the full server. Um, so it is like a, a resource source if someone's genuinely interested then you can come in you can learn the stuff and you can get into the the server it's just uh they're they have that application process to protect the people that are in there um and it's just make sure that the people who are in the server are there for the right reasons because you know it's the internet you have all kinds of uh 
trolls and raids and all kinds of stuff like that um or you know just like a real club um you could sometimes get people who are coming in there to uh like harass the goths or whatever so um it's a uh, it's an application process that keeps the community very curated but it's also a great learning resource for anyone who wants to get involved in goth or um learn more about the goth scene yeah um uh... And even if we do have our uh, gates up, so to speak, uh, it's uh, purely as uh, Kelly said there that uh, to protect our community in there. And it's not especially difficult to get in. I mean, we have a whole bunch of people who didn't know much at all, uh, who have been in since a good few years. So just, just be honest and uh, tell us and uh, we'll gladly give you any pointers we can. Yeah, and if you are one of those people who are just looking for a big titty goth GF, be honest then too, so we can kick you out. <laughs> oh, yes. that's the worst. <laughs> I literally we had, had a those people. <laughs> like they actually I... admit in their intro they're looking for a big titty goth GF. Like, I, I had a dude. I'm I'm pulling up the screenshot now in a Facebook <laughs> group. Say to me this just this week. Oh god. Sacrifice. Me sacrifice me to the dark lord please with the like um the orange emoji that's like with the tongue out and like the sweat drop why <laughs> yeah just uh, uh, i get i get comments like that <laughs> like dudes that are like sacrifice me to satan <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. yeah it's a whole bunch of weird uh stereotypes i guess Yep. Uh, it's uh yeah i don't know it's uh, it's getting quite frustrating on the web I'll, I'll tell you yeah it's been frustrating let's be real <laughs> since the the whole time i mean like even uh, i'm thinking in <laughs> earlier days of social media like i'm thinking in the myspace days there was still it was the same stuff the same the same issues that we're taking now where we're like oh um like people with like the big titty goth girlfriend meme okay that's a new version of the same problem of like people come in and fetishize goths or whatever yeah. that stuff's been going on the whole time um, yeah back the... in the day it was sexy death chick like now it's big tv got gf yeah. Right. yeah um i i know that um this this same argument keeps coming up like every other year like and i'm sure it's been probably happening since before the internet and probably the whole time like within the the goth scene, probably the punk scene too. The idea of like commercialization of the subculture. That's another one that people get all up in arms about and have the same arguments and debates over time and time again. For probably 40 years, people have been having these same conversations. Uh, when I was in high school, I remember it was like this, uh, if you shop at Hot Topic, you're a poser. Uh, and, and those same things like come up. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see uh like online these uh these debates these uh these issues that we run into uh it's just it's so cyclical right. and it gets boring too because it's the same things over and over and over again exactly just a different <laughs> spin on it sometimes like uh big city goth girlfriend for example that's just the old way the new way of saying something that has been there for the whole time basically just yeah, that. well, um, it's goths being seen, uh, and this is especially, like, uh, in it prolific with, uh, you know, female presenting goths um, being seen as, like, a, a novelty booty call, basically, uh, rather than a human being. <laughs> it can be quite objectifying. All right. Uh, I got some good questions here in chat, uh, actually. What about movies or literature? How does that connect to to the subculture? Yeah, this is always one of those things. Oh, this is a rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, okay, yeah. Caroline, you want to? You, you can you can feel the literature one. <laughs> That's your jam. <laughs> okay, so I am a huge fan of Gothic literature, and I have been since I was very young, and even before I discovered goth music so like i could say that you know that led me to it in a way um 
And there is that connection with Gothic literature and architecture. And I guess those things led to music journalists describing certain bands in like the 70s-ish as Gothic. But what they meant by Gothic isn't, you know, what we deem as Gothic rock today. And of course there is the whole Dracula, vampires, the spooky, uh, a ghost. Uh, gothic literature uh, often has supernatural elements. It doesn't always do, and often it'll be in some kind of gothic mansion or something, but it doesn't always either. And that didn't really directly influence the music that we now know as goth. Uh, at the start, it re didn't really, even though uh, we often say that the very first goth song was Bella Lugosi's Dead by Bauhaus. But it wasn't really until later that we saw the whole vampire thing uh, being connected with the goth scene at all. Yeah, that was big in the 90s, or that started being pretty big in the 90s, I think, the vampire stuff. Yeah, and I think you can actually blame movies for that. Cause... Yeah, I was about to say, it was really big in, like, ma mainstream pop culture at the time. Yeah, Interview with the Vampire, the movie came out in 94, I believe. And yeah. And then we had those Blade, we had Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, the old movie, and the TV show. Uh, there, there was whole uh, vampire explosion thing, and of course that would resonate with a lot of the goths. Um, so, oh yeah, and the crow, of course. Hello. Oh yes. <laughs> oh <of> yeah. Course. <laughs> yeah, that was also in '94, I believe. Uh, and we had the cure with Burn on the soundtrack. So I guess that movie has quite the connection with the goth scene. Just you know, through The Cure and through a lot of teenagers at the time, you know, emulating that look and everybody just loving that movie in general. Gypsy 83, I guess that one is a movie that has connection to the scene. Yeah, um, that one's, um, I think, a little bit later. That might have been late 90s, early 2000s, something like that. Um, there's, well, I mean, there's plenty of movies that I think are like um relevant to like the subculture like as far as like what you were saying with like gothic and like movies and stuff like that the gothic genre of like literature and stuff like that um a lot of stuff in the goth scene over the years has been highly influenced by that although gothic literature and, and gothic architecture and design and art and stuff like that has far more reach than just the goth subculture. The goth subculture eats that shit up. But, um, yeah, you know, we love that kind of stuff. But it's uh, far more popular and, and wide-reaching than just the goth subculture that has, like, so much, like, lengthier history and, and stuff to it. But, like, with movies, there's, like, there's plenty of movies where, yeah, the soundtrack has, like, plenty of, like, goth or goth-adjacent, like, songs on it. Um, there's movies like... Um, one of, or my favorite movie is 24 Hour Party People, and that's not exactly goth, but it is, like, about factory records, and it has a lot about, like, Joy Division and, uh, like, New Order and stuff in it. There's a there's another movie about Joy Division. Now I, I'm blanking on the name. Um, there's a, I think it's um, called Control, but I'm not 100% on there's that. There's a documentary about Joy Division as well. I don't... I consider Joy Division to be, like, proto-goth, meaning like a, an immediate precursor to goth um like very like the closest step in the music evolution before like we got to you like the the first goth band i i consider bauhaus to be the first goth band but there's debate over that okay. uh, a movie that i was thinking about i think no one mentioned it the hunger yes oh my god can i just show a book <laughs> I have of that, but I haven't read yet. Okay, let me just see. Oh, fuck, glare. This is actually uh, an 80s copy of the book. Nice. 
So I'm gonna read that pretty soon. But yes, that movie. Oh my god, that has a lot of connection to the scene. Indeed, indeed. Yes. I, I was sitting here like waiting. And I said, "Anyone gonna mention it? No. All right. Then oh I get god, to do it." God. <laughs> Take away my goth points. <laughs> Hand in your goth card, please. <laughs> Inside your yeah, that one. movie opens up with uh, Bauhaus performing Bella Lugosi is dead, so like, boom, goth right there. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's um. All right, Willa. We'll I would do say that. there's a a lot of movies that you could say are relevant to goths or whatever that aren't maybe about goth or even like you know that there's a lot of uh horror movie fandom in the goth subculture there's a lot of crossover between those two communities although again kind of like the gothic literature um horror movies have way more popularity reach than just goths uh it's a lot more popular than just the goth scene but um Horror movies and horror movie fandom tends to tends to be popular in the goth scene. Um, and again, goth music is dark and kind of uh, can be kind of gloomy and stuff. So all of the dark and gloomy things like complement uh, the goth subculture well. It's I think it's hard to uh, boil the uh, goth subculture as an entity down to like a formula of things. Um, goth is a subculture that revolves around goth music and you can you can genretize music i think it's harder to genretize people or to be able to like sum up um the subculture or the community as a whole there's just like so much to it yeah and uh especially like what you said there about uh, that it's very hard to genretize a person for example because uh, as we talked about how uh, a lot of things that a goth may like is also very well liked in other aspects and just like that it's also that you could be a part of several subcultures so it's not just one box that someone could fit in it could be a whole bunch of them right uh, the multiple subculture participation thing um that is so common especially uh you know if you're involved in goth for a long time um you're going to get exposure to other subcultures. Like they share the same venues as us for like hosting events. Um, there's a lot of people who are involved in like more than one underground alternative scene. You'll see the musicians crossover. Um, like you might have a, a favorite goth band and then the, the you know, the guitarist and songwriter for that goth band goes off and forms a, a metal project. Um, so there's like a lot of stuff like that that happens where there's a lot of crossover. Um, there's a lot of club nights that are mixed genre and stuff like that. So um, the different um, subcultures and alternative communities and scenes, there's a lot of intermingling in that kind of like uh, underground music ecosystem. And when I um, tell people like my scope of music that I cover, um, I'll say like, you know, the, the goth genres like um, dark post-punk and, and dark wave and death rock and all those, but I'll also cover synth pop and punk and psychobilly. And those aren't goth genres. They're just genres and, and scenes that I really love that I've picked up from being in that world that kind of like underground music world so um i think when you try to uh sum up the goth subculture it gets difficult because uh it gets it gets more complex and the world opens up more and more the longer you're involved in it i think <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely <clears throat> and uh, i can just take myself as uh, uh something regarding that how, who uh, likes different kinds of uh, subcultures and uh, music, for example. Like, uh, I don't know how many know them, but I know a few will. The Coffin Shakers from uh, here in Sweden. Fantastic band who does, like, uh, a dark kind of uh, psychobilly-ish music. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. It's so damn good. And it's just something yeah. that I have learned, uh, have noticed and learned about since... Uh, since I uh, joined the subculture way back. And well, just uh, awesome. yeah, Dave, I think uh, like 
coming of age in the in the 2000s because i think we're you know in, in a similar age range coming of age in like the 2000s that was the era of like the death rock revival era and i know death rock has been alive and well the whole time especially in like latin america and stuff like that but when i say like death rock revival it's the the word revival specifically refers to death rock being revived in the Los Angeles scene in the late 90s early 2000s so that was this era of death rock revival and there was a lot of like psychobilly dark punk death rock and all that stuff was like really big in the early 2000s that was um a huge part of the scene like and psychobilly was um coupled with death rock quite a bit there were a lot of shows where it was like death rock and psycho billy in the same show aye, aye. i actually have uh a few issues um of drop dead magazine which was a magazine in the 2000s it was also a music festival drop dead uh festival here in the u.s um and the magazine covered goth death rock punk and psycho billy um and one of uh one of my local dj promoter friends around here uh apparently wrote for the magazine i didn't even know that until recently because i have uh some framed issues of the magazine hanging on my wall and i posted a picture online of my living room and she was like hey i can't believe you have a uh, drop dead I, I wrote um for for that magazine and helped organize the festival um but that kind of like goes to show the the flavor of the era in the 2000s there like goth death rock punk psychobilly that was such a common combination i love psychobilly i had the betty page bangs for like five years i just grew them out this past year <laughs> <laughs> i just got a uh, notes in chat there erica scary yes yep yeah, oh, that's DJ Kelly A. Uh, <laughs> right. Hey, Kelly. She's the other uh, Kelly in my local scene. I figured. Other goth <laughs> Kelly. Yep, that was Erica that wrote for uh, Drop Dead Magazine and uh, worked on the Damn festival. Right, Damn right. Um, yeah, I, I love that kind of stuff as well. Psycho, Psycho Billy is so much fun. It like doesn't take itself too seriously. I feel like I love goth. Goth is uh, uh, my one true love. But I do think that sometimes we goths can take ourselves a little too seriously. Way too often, oh, wait, actually. No. Way too often. <laughs> Which is why we now have this show, Gothy Roundtable. Yes. It's a show for us to not take ourselves seriously. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty important with like any dark subculture really like don't take yourself so fucking seriously that goes with goths and here in norway black metal is huge and like a lot of people will, will be like oh yes <laughs> and i'm like no you like kitties too mate like no yeah uh i i as a goth i can't take myself too seriously because i know uh, that the average person thinks that the way I look, my interests, all that stuff are pretty ridiculous. Um, and I, and I'm aware of that. And, uh, so you just gotta have fun with it. <laughs> and it's supposed to be fun, right? <laughs> like it's something we like. It's a hobby that stretches out to a whole lifestyle, really. And if you're not enjoying yourself, why would you, you know, be into this? Exactly. I mean, like people say that goth music is so gloomy and shit, and I'm like, I'm jumping around, dancing, super happy. Like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's yeah. like when the people talk about how uh, how serious goth music is in its lyrics, and I'm like, all right, let, wait, let let me check my Alien Sex Fiend collection here. Oh wait, anal sex. All right, is that spooky serious? I don't know. I mean, it's yeah. just, just so many different weird subjects, as well as some more serious ones. It's just so and, wide range. Uh, yeah, and it, it, I do, um, I do sometimes see some people, especially when they're first starting out in goth, want to try and uh, make goth out to be like some kind of monolith, like. Uh, there, like there's like a, a rule book for goths or something and really it's um as a community it's it's like an art space community like a lot of creative types like it's 
you know, it's built around music. So you're going to get a lot of like creative types with, uh, you know, hanging around a bunch of musicians. And uh, there's just, there's all kinds of uh, different uh, ideas uh, that, you know, come out of the goth subculture. Lots of different uh, themes and lyrics and sounds and techniques. And um, the, there's so much variety in goth music. And, uh, People, I think, uh, the people who are maybe passingly aware of goth expect that all of it sounds like Bella Lugosi's Dead, or uh, they think, like, uh, Sisters of Mercy are, like, the goth band. And uh, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of goth bands that sound like the Sisters of Mercy, but... <laughs> oh, don't we know? <laughs> uh, but but there's, uh, there's so much variety um, with the music, and... Um, so when people are like, oh, goth music is sad or whatever, it's like uh, there, there, there's some common elements that connect uh, goth music. But I think you can uh, you can find goth music for all different types of occasions. I can find goth music to put on a workout playlist. I can find goth music to just like kind of relax too if I want to like kick back, maybe even take a nap, like the more ethereal stuff. Um, there's goth music that's good for, uh, dancing, that's good for, there's, there's so much variety in goth music, and, um, you know, when people don't like something, I always tell them, try something different, like, there's, there's a lot of variety, there's, there's something that everyone would like in goth music, there's, there's gotta be something for everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, if you say that you don't like it, like, then you haven't tried. <laughs> yep. Yeah, or they don't know where to find the right stuff. I, I I, think that, too. I think people who say they don't like goth music or they tried it and they don't like it or whatever, maybe they just don't know where to find the right stuff. That's why it's great to have resources like Gothy Discord, um, where everyone's, like, willing to, like, jump in and, like, make suggestions. And it it's... It's good to have these online resources because I think the the online resources have really helped to um, keep the scene viable. Uh, I see uh, people who have been involved for a really long time coming out to events, and I see people who are brand new coming out to shows and events. And the people who are brand new now are, like, people of all ages. It's not like... Even when I was, like, growing up where... People who were getting interested in goth or punk or, like, emo, whatever, alternative subculture, it was usually something that people got in interested in as a teenager. And then um, over time, some people grew out of it and some people stuck with it. Um, but now, with the internet and social media and all that stuff, people of all ages, at all stages of life, are coming across these bands, coming across these events coming out to the shows, the DJ nights, like, people are coming in at all different ages, it's very cool to see. Hi. Uh, I got a question in the chat. Uh, what other sources can we recommend, except for the Gothic Discord? What do you mean, you don't want to join? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, has a great website. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I yeah my 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 website which is um a lot of my website is me posting videos that I um have on my YouTube channel so my YouTube channel Cadaver Kelly um I make a lot of music recommendations I do have uh, a few videos that kind of cover evolution of goth music goth basics I did some top ten countdowns for the decades although uh, I could probably make uh five top tens for each decade but um i i did some uh i do some lists i do album reviews i i basically share music in all different types of um uh, like formats um on my channel um caroline has a, a blog called caroline sometimes um that's a blog spot blog um r slash goth the um the goth subreddit is a great resource as well um, I, Caroline and I both write for Obscura Undead, which is another great resource, um, for finding new music. Obscura Undead's mostly just, like, new music stuff going on in the current scene. It's, like, it's a music, music news source, um, 
and uh, they have a YouTube channel as well. And their YouTube channel, they do a weekly news update that's very much like old school MTV news style. Um, and they have a um, quarterly print zine. Um, so all that stuff is uh, great resources. Caroline, you have any other recommendations for resources for beginners? I don't think I can think of any other right now. Like, I've read quite a few books about the goth subculture, and I've never been satisfied with any of them. I haven't read, like, all of them yet, but there's so many that just... Uh... <laughs> I hear Somewhere Leather, Somewhere Lace is good by Andy <laughs> Harriman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good book. Yeah, that's um, a really good I one. would recommend uh, the books by Mick Mercer. Um, oh, yeah. Also very good. Um, so I'm, I'm looking on my bookshelf right now. I have a bunch of Mick Mercer books. Um, yeah, Mick Mercer is good. Like, I've only gotten one book from him, and I didn't know that it was basically, like, a phone book of goth Oh, it's bands. a directory. Oh, you're talking about the goth Bible. Yeah, that's basically, like, a directory. But he has, like, the gothic rock black book. He has uh music to die for there's like there's a there's a number of books by mick mercer so if you if you go on amazon and you search mick mercer you can find his books on there somewhere leather somewhere lace is good um there's other books that um maybe touch on some goth relevant music and some goth adjacent music like there's this book rip it up and start again it's about post punk so some of those bands that one um some of those bands are going to be like kind of um goth adjacent some of them are going to be well i i imagine that there's some actual goth bands in that book um there's uh you could read books about some of the um early musicians uh i have this book um cured the story of three imaginary boys is a book about the cure i love that one <laughs> uh there's uh what's the what's that death rock book the real dense death rock book that came out like two years ago uh the phantoms? mikey bean one yeah phantoms by mikey bean that's a good one about like the death rock scene it's um, so heavy though it took me like three months or more. it's a tough read it's a tough read it's dense it's a little all over the place but that one's good. There, so there's um, there's lots of books um, out there. Caroline, like you said, like a lot of books about the goth subculture. Um, I I'll I'll say this right now. Any book I've read about goth or the goth subculture, I'm going to be able to find at least some things in there where I'm like, this isn't exactly how I see it, or I don't necessarily agree with everything in this book. Um, but once you start to read a good handful of them, you start to get a, a, at least a good idea of the subculture and stuff like that. And there's, there's certain, um, there's certain opinions and stuff about when it comes to like music genre and like the subculture and cultural norms and stuff like that, where you're going to find differences of opinion in the scene, especially, um, you know, it, the scene is different from city to city, location to location. So I'll hear people say, oh, like the way you're doing goth is wrong. This isn't how we did it in the 80s. The way we did it in the 80s was blah, blah, blah. And then I'll talk to someone that I know who was around in the 80s and said, no, that that's wrong. In the 80s, we did this. Like I'll hear people say conflicting accounts of what happened in the goth scene in the 80s just because they were in different local scenes. So when you're reading books, you're reading through um like these kinds of resources or you're listening to podcasts you're hearing people talk about their experiences um just remember that it is like such a uh a scene with such rich history uh 40 years um and it's it's global so there's uh there's goth scenes all over the world and they can vary from location to location how people do things how they run their events how their local scene operates um, and I think the more resources that you kind of go through, the more you read some of these books, you listen to people on podcasts, on videos, the more you talk to people online, you get um, more of a better idea of some of those nuances and, and what the scene is like. So that was that was a lot of uh, resources. Dave, any other resources that we missed that you would recommend? 
Uh, no, I think that uh, took up all of them. Th there was a really good site a few years ago from uh, an old goth dude who uh, uh, made a lot of really good sources there. But uh, it went down one, two years? No, it, three years ago. I don't know. Oh. Uh, I think it was called like Scath Demon something. It has some really oh. good sources, but uh, it seems to have been taken down, sadly. Yeah, I don't think we, I know that should, one. Uh, we should probably do like a book review at some point. Yeah, yeah. And like <laughs> uh, bring up all of the books we've read, what we recommend, what's trash. <laughs> we could do we could do an episode about goth books or about like educational goth. Well, we could probably do plenty of episodes about books. Um, and uh, we could talk about uh, books about goth history, about goth oh, music, about thank you so much. The goth I, uh, subculture, because when I read Thank books you. about goth, they're like, they tend to fall into a few categories. There's um, the books where it's like purely recounting history, which I think like Phantoms would kind of like fall into that category where it's recounting a lot of hit the, the history behind the music. Same thing with like the books about like the Cure or Joy Division. Oh, Unknown Pleasures by Peter Hook if you want to learn more about Joy Division. Again, Joy Division in my opinion is a little more proto-goth, but still it's, um, a, a, I think it was a, an important precursor and Joy Division is very well loved in the goth subculture. Um, yeah, I so... love all of Peter Hook's books. Like he writes like if you're just sitting there uh, with him and just having a few beers. Like that's how he writes, and it's yeah, so I nice. agree. I love like, his my and... my favorite thing about reading like stuff about music is re reading like musician biographies. And they will often write in that very casual style, and they will tell all these crazy stories about what happened. Um, I think in, was it the Hacienda book? Uh, I think he said that, um, I think it was Peter Murphy tried to get into the Hacienda and he was like, don't you know who I am? And Peter Hook was like, yes, I do. Get out. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll have to read that one because I didn't read that one. Um, the Hacienda that sounded uh, pretty wild, though. I have well, my favorite movie is Twenty Four Hour Party People, but I've also read the book Twenty Four Hour Party People by Tony Wilson. Um, so, and Tony Wilson was the one who kind of like started up the Hacienda, and um, the that was um, that's also was a part of the uh, plot line of um, like Twenty Four Hour Party People. He talked a lot about the Hacienda and stuff in there. Um, so that's a good film if someone wants to watch the movie it's a comedy kind of like a dry like satire sort of a uh, movie um about factory records and the hacienda and joy division new order all that stuff um but also the book's very good um and uh tony wilson was a very interesting guy but the those kinds of resources yeah we should we should have an episode where we talk about books um, I feel like it was quite ambitious of us to think that we could come on here and give like a nice little concise, uh, you know, uh, overview of uh, the goth subculture. <laughs> I'm I'm realizing now that uh, there's like so much to unpack there. <laughs> yeah, we're just not gonna be able to do it. Like I see, we're going on like an hour now. And... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, maybe maybe we all can talk a little bit about like the state of our local scenes right now. So uh, Caroline, you are quite the uh, scene maker in Norway. So you want to tell us uh, what's been happening in your uh, local scene with the COVID times? I know uh, probably uh, not too many in-person events right now. Nothing really. Uh, here in Norway, we've oh, had like we alcohol bans, um, oh. so a lot of bars have um, decided to just shut down because there's just no point. Uh, and uh, like meeting with people is very limited. Like now, I think it has opened up to. 10 people inside and 20 people outside. Of eyes appears so, from the abyss. nothing's happening right now. Uh, the, some people have had a few concerts here and there where it's, you know, all seated and I guess max 50 people or something like that. 
So that's all we've had, really. Um, I don't think we've had any club nights in the country, as far as I know of, during the pandemic. Uh, I have no idea if our own club night will return. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to start something on my own. <laughs> I already do, or I used to, arrange a cafe meetup with the local goths here because there was a few underage goths that I wanted to, you know, include into like our little group of people here and also that we could talk actually, you know, and not shout as we do at goth night. <laughs> So I was thinking that I would arrange another meetup again pretty soon since things are opening back up again and we're allowed to meet people, but other than that, nothing. Uh, I am very active in the Twitch DJ scene though, so that's ha that's been bleh. that has been my life for over a year now and to me, who is autistic, introverted, and has social anxiety, like, that's- that's perfect. <laughs> uh, like, to me, it counts as so socializing, you know what I mean? Yeah, it definitely counts as socializing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, I will be watching sometimes even multiple streams at once, almost every single day. Can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing how uh, the like online stuff or how the scene pulled together during the pandemic to to make all these like virtual events and stuff happen to like keep everything going. I feel like people are coming out of the pandemic almost more energized and inspired than before. Yeah. It's mentally, physically, no, I'm starting to work out now because I've realized that I haven't danced regularly in platform boots for over a year now, so my fucking leg muscles are gone. Oh, uh, you'll get them back. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was thinking, like, oh my god, I have a year left for ne next Vigate, and that's a marathon for your legs. So I'm gonna work out and train myself back up again to be able to physically do events again, because I couldn't do that now. <laughs> I've been working out all pandemic, so I expect to be able to dance for longer and harder than I could before. <laughs> so Dave, how about uh, in Sweden? Uh, any any events or anything starting to come back? Can I come over, basically? <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, if I, if we are lucky, we will have an event basically for the first time in a long time uh, on the 5th, actually. We're gonna oh, go nice. see uh, one of my favorite Swedish bands, Les Fleurs du Mal. It's gonna be freaking Very great, because cool. they are so awesome people as well. Uh, so I hope everything holds up until then. Otherwise, the Swedish scene have been kind of dormant, as many others. Uh, at this point, I think most of us is active online, and that's about it. Since Sweden has been kind of, we were slow as hell, but uh, since uh, the government actually shut down everything, it's been kind of dead on that aspect. But we have like, I think we have seven or eight concerts, events that uh, we're still waiting to get permission to go to. <laughs> So I'm hoping that it uh, lets us do that soon. Yeah, hopefully. Around here, uh, things are just starting to come back. We uh, ha we do have the vaccine around here, or we have three different vaccines. Um, we're very fortunate because uh, pretty much anyone who wants a vaccine can get one um, now. And I would say that most people I know are vaccinated at this point. I'm fully vaccinated. Um, events are starting to come back, but the events in my local kind of like goth, post-punk, underground, like alternative scene, um, right now it seems like there's outdoor stuff. Like uh, next Friday, uh, I'm going to an outdoor event and it's actually two different local post-punk nights that are combining forces. One's more of like, um, a brighter post-punk glam rock art rock kind of night combining with my favorite dark post-punk kind of like underground post-punk death rock night 
Um, so though they're combining nights to have an outdoor dance party, um, and that's going to be in a community park. So I'm going to that. Um, I'm also going to a Prince tribute party <laughs> next week. Uh, so not exactly a goth event, but for any anyone who likes uh, synthy 80s music, which I just, I kind of like 80s music in general. I love Prince. So I'm, I'm going to uh, that. Um, that I'm seeing a lot of um, a lot of different events pop up. There's actually a couple um, DIY punk fest kind of uh, shows that I've seen um, listings for. Um, so things are coming back in an outdoor capacity, and there are going to be more like indoor shows and stuff like that. I have not seen any shows booked that would be within the scope of what I normally cover for like my channel or like. <laughs> basically my uh, uh, scope of supported subgenres like post-punk, wave, death rock, goth, any of that stuff. I haven't seen that stuff come back locally yet. Um, I do have one promoter friend who reached out to me um, and we're talking about um, maybe uh, do promoting a show early next year, but that's the, that's the, only talk of um those kinds of shows that i've heard so far uh i am going down to absolution fest in tampa florida in october so that's going to be fun that's going to be a lot of uh like a uh, gothy post-punk wave sort of bands um i think the events will will come back here it's just right now the um the concerts and shows going on in the pittsburgh area are being put on by these large promotions companies that have like more liability insurance and have the money to book the venues right away um there's this promotions company promo west here they're a big um big promotions group and they they bring in like pretty big name what i would consider mainstream bands but i guess maybe the average person considers them more alternative like i'm going to see modest mouse in august and like that's a band where i would consider that a mainstream band but you know the average person might consider modest mouse to be a little more niche um that is uh very mainstream to me as someone who covers extremely niche music um so there's there's shows like that around here my local scene has been um, doing a lot of streaming throughout the pandemic. Um, we've had Zoom dance parties. Um, I got to guest DJ at a Zoom party. DJ Kellyer, who hosts it, is actually in the chat right now. Um, but her uh, her dance party, Moving Shadows, she asked me to guest DJ for that um, back in the fall, and that was a lot of fun. And she uh, she was doing those monthly for a while, um, and she also streams on Twitch sometimes. Um, we have uh, a couple local. DJs who will stream on Twitch uh, so that's kind of the state of my local scene right now it's things are starting to uh, inch their way back but um, we're not we're not quite to uh, you know shows in the local scene coming back yet I... <clears throat> but it's been uh, it's been quite interesting how this whole uh, pandemic have uh, have changed things yeah. I I just have to say hi to DJ Kangol. <laughs> <laughs> He's my buddy. Oh hey, Skull Girl. Oh, we have a whole bunch of people hi. we know in chat. And hi everyone oh, else. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, oh. um, the whole scene, like just moving on online, has been so amazing like I, I can't even imagine like wow um i remember like a few djs uh over a year ago like in march were starting to do stuff like a couple of people were doing like those kind of radio sites like where you didn't see them on camera i remember cyber pagan uh, did that geisterwelt um and that Obscura Undead were pretty early on with doing their, like, uh, a virtual club thing. Um, at first, they had, you know, all the DJs spinning in different rooms 
at the same time and you had to jump between them like you know in a real club oh that yeah i remember cool. yeah <laughs> and i hated that because i was like i feel so bad because i want to watch everyone but yeah i wanted to watch them all at once it was hard <laughs> yeah like all the tabs open it was yeah um and then i remember i think that was the first like very big one was that the world goth day or was that the um uh, goths against racism thing one of those two or both of them might have been like around the same time did like the very first 24 hour stream which at the time seemed crazy like getting so many people to coordinate and like be on the schedule and 24 hours like that oh i see those all the time now (laughs) yeah like just two months later that was suddenly you know a big thing and the biggest one uh at least that i know of and have been a part of was um the one for animals i forget the name now um but that was um four day stream i think it was it was insane. Four day stream. That is. Yeah. That's. That's uh, wild. At I think that we point, had a break like, on the Monday. At at that point, that's like a full fledged like TV station. <laughs> yeah. Twenty four like, hour programming. <laughs> yeah, that was the closest to Vigate I've experienced with these live streams. Uh, so for that one, I just made sure. That, oh, I got to sleep. You know, like for the other. 24 hours when it was like yeah i can stay up oh i would not be able to do 24 hours straight i just my body wouldn't be able to take it yeah i've been like such an old lady like through this pandemic i've been uh going to bed early waking up super early and i feel bad because like um a lot of people in the east coast like time zone have these like virtual clubs and events that um they start like later on in the evening and i want to like join i want to join like these local streams and stuff i'm like oh 10 p.m that's that's (laughs) past my bedtime (laughs) yeah yeah. if my sleep schedule has been fucked up enough and it has during this whole pandemic i will watch the people who are on the west coast of the u.s so I will watch DJ Kangol and all of those people. Sisters of Mondays, they're some of my favorites. Um, last night, Guy Stavelt had their one year anniversary on Twitch and Madeleine was, uh, she had her 15 year DJ anniversary. So they had a huge party and I was on until 6 a.m. And I think they were still going for a while after that. Uh. Wow. It's amazing to see all this online and see the community come together like that. Yeah. Indeed. Like, I, I remember back to, you know, when Vegete was the only connection I had to the goth scene. Like, before I even found communities online, and I was so fucking lonely. And now I've made so many new friends all around the world, and, like, the whole community is super great the whole twitch fat gang thing we have going on so great yeah i feel like uh with these like online communities my goth friends and like the goth scene and stuff is now part of my day-to-day life it's not just when i go out to events in my local scene or you know traveling to go see a show or a music festival or whatever it's um i'm talking to goths like all day long whether it's like online or in person and you know i feel like i'm i'm more of like an extroverted person i um i like to socialize face to face in person and stuff like that but these like online communities have helped me um find more in-person events to go to it's helped me like meet more people in person so, uh, th- just the way the community connects online, um, it's, I think it's good for whether someone does want to be able to have some connection at home or if someone wants to go out and like meet people. But like during this pandemic, the, the, these virtual streams and events are kind of like the best of both of those worlds where people are 
like um, getting on video and interacting with one another and having conversations and talking, but it's also very accessible to people from their homes and people could be socially distant and we didn't need venues and we didn't need to be face to face in a pandemic to have like this social connection and keep our community going. Yeah, like it's so crazy that me as a person in Norway can attend Nocturna in Chicago without even leaving my couch. Hey, it's cool that I can attend Nocturna in Chicago, and I'm in Pittsburgh. I could drive to Chicago from here. It'd be a long drive, but I'll I'll do that one day. If we do, we have any uh, Chicago goths in the chat? I think uh, I saw Cemetery Confessions. Uh, yeah. Danny from Cemetery Confessions is in Chicago. Yeah. Um, we have Skull Girdle in the chat who said that um, they have uh, events in in Dallas year round. Yeah, I know down in Texas they have. Um, they they have like pretty much their events back to normal i think from what i've seen um same thing with like florida's getting their normal events back uh it's only a matter of time around here my state has been a little more cautious which i am i'm glad for because you know i don't want uh people to be getting sick and stuff like that but now that everyone's getting vaccinated and stuff it's going to be nice to to see these events, see people in person. I keep telling uh, the Obscure Undead crew that when I see them down at Absolution Fest, I'm gonna cry when I see people in person. DJ yeah. Kelly A's in the chat. I'm gonna see DJ Kelly A next weekend at an event. I might cry at that too. I'm just gonna, <laughs> all, all the feels like going back into the world and seeing people again. <laughs> uh. So jealous like i'm maybe like two months away from my first dose of the vaccine so it'll be quite a while until there will be events again uh, but i'm hoping at least in a year there's the next big attack and i will be meeting more people than ever like man i thought i knew a lot of people there already but now oh my god yeah. i'm gonna make it there one day caroline <laughs> do it it's gonna be pretty crazy actually going back to events and all when uh, I mean with how the whole alternative scenes in general have just connected through this from all across the globe it's uh, pretty damn impressive and uh, pretty awesome there's yeah. gonna be a lot of new people that you haven't met IRL but online to meet Cool. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about like people should wear like badges with like their Twitch <laughs> usernames or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Skullgirl Me with my asked... YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Skullgirl asked, "Do you think it will go on with anything close to the energy during the COVID?" With like the, whole, the live uh... streams. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like um... mo most of the DJs that I know will continue. I will probably continue too. Uh, just like maybe not as often, you know, um, as right now, because many are streaming like even three times a week right now. So whenever they get their club nights back, they might go down to, you know, once a week or at least once a month. But other than that, I know people will definitely continue streaming. Right. Yeah, that's kind of what I've heard as well from uh, people who I've talked to uh, as well, that while some of them may reduce the... Uh, uh, the times they uh, stream on due to, uh, you know, life going back to normal. Uh, how normal that can be, actually. I mean, who knows? But, uh... What does normal <laughs> even mean? What does yeah. that even mean? <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're gods, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fantastically weird here. <laughs> yeah, I've, I feel like, well, I feel like right now... Um, and, you know, throughout a lot of this pandemic, at any given time during the day, there's going to be at least one, if not a couple different, like, relevant, like, goth DJ streams that I could tune into. Um, it's probably going to be not as many, not so much, like, uh, paralyzed by the options after the pandemic. Maybe that's a good thing. Um, yeah, and like, some... I guess in, in the future, like, you will be able to catch all of them. Like, whereas now, it's kind of like you're at Vegete and you have to choose between the 250 bands. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be difficult. I, I am, I'm going to go to Vegete at some point, and, uh, 
I don't know if it's gonna be next year or the year after that, but I think in the next couple years I'm going to make it out to uh, Vigete. Uh, so I'll get to uh, see Caroline when I finally do. Uh, but uh, it's that's going to be a very tough decision because like when I go to music festivals here in the US, I don't have that problem. Like when I go down to Absolution Fest, there's only one band playing at a time, so I can see all the bands. We have um, an alternative kind of like DIY punk fest that does usually have some like post-punk and goth relevant like bands, uh, Skull Fest here. And um, it is a lot of shows, but they're still one at a time. Like if someone wanted to go to all the shows for Skull Fest, they could go see all the bands. Um, so, yeah. and I think some of the other there's a few other festivals in the u.s that i want to hit up and those it's probably the same way where it's one band at a time there's cold waves in chicago murder of crows in new york there's one in boston and now i can't think of the name of it and then there's one in kentucky as well which one's convergence there's a there's a few different festivals here Isn't in the u.s convergence the one that moves or is that another one? Oh, I, I i don't know there's there's a number of ones uh here in the u.s uh, I'd like to, I'd like to see all of them if I can, <laughs> life goals, but we'll see it. I think there's going to be a lot more traveling around after the pandemic. I think people are going to be eager to, uh, to see the world since, uh, the world got so much smaller for all of us for so long. Yeah, people saying, uh, that Convergence is the one that moves around. And Kelly saying the twenty fifth one was in Boston. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm uh. What? Skullgirdle said uh, excited for uh, shows and festivals. Want some streams to remain. I agree. It's nice to have those streams, especially um, when I'm at home. I can sometimes I'll watch these like Twitch streams and stuff, and I'll just like clean my house and dance while I'm watching DJs on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think I had somebody in my stream the other day that was like, "Oh yeah, I was in my kitchen dancing around to your music." Yeah, Caroline, I I can never catch yours live, but uh, a lot of times you're uh, DJing when I'm working and stuff like that. But I watch yours back, and sometimes I uh, cast your uh, I cast your DJ sets onto my TV while I'm cleaning my house, while I'm uh, doing things around the house. I uh, I do that with the DJ streams. I'll I usually uh, will will cast a stream uh, to uh, I have a Chromecast on my TV. I can um, basically mirror stuff onto my TV, and uh, I'll ha I'll have these DJ sets blasting through my house while I'm cleaning. <laughs> yeah, I try to stream at different times so that it can be good for Europeans and uh the americans but it doesn't always work out that well um and i try not to fuck up my sleep schedule too much <laughs> so like uh, 8 9 p.m here to like 1 a.m like that's something i would consider pretty good time for europe and not super late um but uh on wednesday uh, the Americans were coming in within the last 15 minutes of my stream, so that was like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I really, I was gonna tune into your uh, anniversary DJ stream, and I had the day wrong. I went to tune into it the next day, and I was like, where is it? And I looked at my Facebook event listings, and I had to, like, search DJ Carnivorous anniversary stream, and it said it happened the day before. I'm like, no, I didn't miss that. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I I have been watching like a lot of these Twitch streams after the fact. Uh, I I was like much better at being like in the chat and like be catching these things as they happened earlier on in the pandemic. Uh, but then just I got on this old lady sleep schedule and uh, my day job got really uh, wild. I've been working a lot of hours for that, and so I've just been watching them back usually after the fact. Um, but now I'm going to be going to more in-person events. I'm going to film those and put them on my YouTube channel. Right. I got a really good question here in chat. How does someone create their own local scene? Well, I guess I've kind of done that. 
exactly. <laughs> um, so here in my city, Bergen, Norway, uh, it's the second biggest city in Norway, which means 250,000 people. Um, that's a lot for us. <laughs> Um, it used to have a goth scene um, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and I was born in 94, so obviously when I was old enough, that scene had died out completely. Uh, there was nobody like at the right age, so like in their 30s now, that could continue on with it, because the older people now in their 40s were, you know, having kids and all that stuff, so they just didn't have the time or energy anymore. So what I did was that I just kept finding people local to me online. Uh, we girls are really good at just hanging out at our own house and being online and stuff. Like, Instagram is actually a good way of finding people <laughs> in your city and stuff. So I just like message people like, hey, I recognize that building you're standing in front of. Are you in my city? And other social media. Uh, there is a Norwegian Facebook group that I found. Uh, and I just, you know, kept collecting all these people. Um, and in the end, when suddenly a wild goth night popped up, um, that wasn't my doing. People thought that I, like, that was me. It wasn't. It was too... Danish art students that just started it <laughs> and then I brought all the people there. I think the most we've ever been at Goth Night was like it was like 11 people. So that's two tables of Goths. That's a lot for us. Nice. Like I've heard that in uh, Oslo, like on a regular night, like there won't even be like 20 people there. Like, Damn. yeah, and that's the biggest city. No. Um, and then I started doing cafe meetups, and that was something that a lot of people were interested in, and at least the first few months, I got a lot of people. Like, I think we were almost 20 people at one point, so I was like, damn. No. Um, and yeah, they brought friends, and yeah, you know, so like just... Find people anywhere on any social media you might have. Like, a lot of people think that they are the only goth in their entire country. That's not true. Like, th there is definitely at least another person in that country sitting at home just like you, being lonely. Like, you just need to find them, and it, it can be really hard. But once you have, like, a little group of people, say even five people, you can just meet up, have a picnic, or go out to a place... Like, you can go out to the fucking metal bar, whatever, like... And they will probably know someone, and yeah, I've gotten to know the... the older goths from uh, the early 2000s, and that's been really cool too, to hear about what kind of bands actually played here, you know, back in the day. So it is definitely possible, um, and I hope that once things open up again, I can start my own night. Um... We'll see if the local night starts back up again. If it does, I might not do it right away. Uh, I do have a venue in mind or two. Uh, we have um, a venue here that's called Hulen. Uh, it means the cave because it is literally a cave. And there was a goth night there back in the day. And I was thinking like I should start a night called Bad Cave there because I am so fucking stereotypical like that. But it would be perfect, right? So yeah, we've got like 100 people in the Norwegian goth group now, so despite having a population of 5 million people, we're, we're out there, and wherever you are too, there will be people somewhere near you at least. So just, you know, just try. I don't have experience in this topic, but I did post um two articles in the twitch chat um which i'm not sure if those went through or not um but uh, on the belfry network um our buddy joe wrote two different articles about how to become a goth dj and how to start a goth event 
Um, and also uh, in the chat is DJ Kellyer, so I wanted to give her a shout out because uh, she's a um, really awesome scene maker in my local community. She's built a really awesome local goth community here. Um, she runs our uh, local goth like Facebook group and a website that's like a resource for goths to find like goth events and stuff like that. And she's been DJing and promoting and, and doing events and stuff for a long time so um we do have some really awesome scene makers here in the the pittsburgh underground music scene who uh work really hard to put these events together and i appreciate them so much and everything that they do to make these events possible because i i have the events to go to and you know it's it's one of my favorite things to do on the weekends is go out to a club or a show or go to these events and it's it's really awesome uh, experience to have those uh, small local communities so if you don't have that um, in your location I would absolutely encourage you if you're willing to put in the time and effort um, try to start something up uh, try to see if maybe you can start a Facebook group or something on social media where you can find uh, the, the local people in your area that might be interested in something like that indeed uh, from I can bring up a little anecdote regarding that as well. Uh, when I was a young lad, how old was I? Well, somewhere around 13, 14, I think. Did uh, your father take you into the city? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, either way, I, uh, I was looking around for alternative folks around, but uh, didn't really have anyone around that place that I could find except a few of my friends. So we kind of just decided on going on the web and just looking around like Facebook and other places. Actually, was Facebook there at that point? I don't know. Either way, uh, I think it was hell gone now that I think about it. But either way, a Swedish site and we were looking around for people and started to do just like uh, uh, yourself did there, Caroline, with uh, having meetups and just uh, find like like-minded people at that point. And it turned out pretty good, because uh, last when I moved away from there, it's had a kind of vibrant uh, alternative scene. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> Find the gay clubs, yes, that's uh, actually a pretty good uh, suggestion, what I've heard as well from uh, many. <laughs> there have been um, a lot of um, ties between uh, the underground alternative community and the LBGTQ plus community going back to the 70s since like the punk days and in, in the UK um, there's been a lot of uh, shared spaces and stuff like that um, here in our local scene we have an LGBTQ plus venue that um, there's a lot of uh, like goth and post-punk shows and stuff would be hosted there called Kativo. Um, I really hope they're reopening. Not sure if they made it through the pandemic or not. We're still kind of seeing what venues made it through. Um, but I think that's the case in, in a lot of local scenes where, uh, you know, you can find uh, gay bars or LGBTQ plus spaces um, and they will um, oftentimes have ties to the local alternative community. But I mean, just small venues in general, if you want to start up an event, um, see what just like local bars and, uh, you know, shared performance spaces there are in your area and uh, see if you can just talk to the manager of one of those places and say, you know, hey, I'm thinking about starting up this dance night or, um, you know, I want to um, book a, a show or book this band for this show. Um, can I work something out with you for, uh, you know, hosting that at this venue? Um, I, there's probably information in the articles that I linked on uh, how to do that stuff as well, um, how to find and approach venues um, and stuff like that. So uh, when it comes to events, you're going to need people to show up to the event. You're going to need a venue to uh, host the event. You're going to need to figure out what the entertainment is. So whether it's a uh, DJs uh, spinning a dance night or you're booking a band or uh, something like that. And then you're going to want to figure out your strategy for um, basically like promoting the event once you have everything secured. Um, so 
those are kind of your your elements the formula for starting up um like a dance night or a show or something like that if you want to do like um event promoting or hosting um or you could do something like what caroline did real casual just to find your local goth community um organize just like a cafe meetup or like a, a coffee hour or even a happy hour just you know create a facebook event listing and and plan with um some of the other goths you find in your area to meet up at a bar somewhere and just you know meet each other yeah, I think that's a great way to start because then people will, you know, know each other and they won't be so afraid to show up at an actual club or an event or something because a lot of us can be pretty shy, have social anxiety or something like that. Um, and here, it um, a lot of the goth events that happened in the past, they were um, at like student bars that are like volunteer so they don't actually make money. So those might be easier to actually, you know, pitch an event to if you at least have some people because they're not, you know, only thinking of profit, you know. Um, and the, the local goth night that we, I guess, kind of still have, that's at um, the bar that my husband is a bar manager of. And during the day, it's like a cafe or a restaurant, like families go there. And then at night, they just remove some tables and then they'll have like pub quizzes, little concerts or like a little dance night. It could be any genre. So, and it's kind of, it's not even alternative. Like it might be a little artsy, but that's it. Like you'd, you'd be surprised what kind of venues would actually take up, you know, goth stuff also seen um cemetery walks uh so if you have any um like historical cemeteries or sightseeing type of cemeteries or somewhere like that you could um organize a, to meet up at a cemetery and go for a walk together um you could organize a picnic at a park goth picnic um there's so many ways that you can get your local scene together um and it's probably more just a matter of finding your local scene on social media and uh, getting the word out. So uh, if you don't already have a Facebook group for something like that in your local community, um, like for example, if you live in Springfield, maybe you search for Springfield Goth on Facebook or something like that. If you don't have a group like that, start one up and uh, try to send it out, have people send it to their friends, see if anyone's interested. Um, that's probably the best way to, um, get people together. Uh, I tend to use Facebook events the most when I'm looking for um, like clubs and shows and stuff like that. There's also the website Meetup. Um, some people use that, um, but I would definitely also use Facebook if you want to try and get people together for events. Yeah, that's definitely the easiest way. I also remembered for the US, there's a site called newgothcity.com where you can sort by state. Um, and there's also someone in Gothy Discord who has made a map of as many goth clubs and stuff they can uh, find. And that's pinned in, I believe, the general channel. So if you join there, just saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as always, uh, as we've said so many times this, uh, <laughs> this uh, stream, Gothy Discord is a fantastic place. You can meet yeah. people from your Join local Gothy scenes. Discord. Just... Yeah, exactly. It has a whole bunch of people there and it's super welcoming. I should know. Yeah, there's so many times that a new person has popped up in Gothy Discord and they'll say like, oh, I don't know any other goths where I'm at. And I'm like, okay, check the map. And then, oh, there's three clubs in their city. Like, you never know. Yeah. Exactly. We've been uh we've been rambling for an hour and a half, basically um all one long way of saying join Gothy Discord. <laughs> yeah, this is basically just a really long ad for Gothy Discord. Yes. yes. <laughs> join today. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> we'll make you a true goth. <laughs> right. Like, exactly. uh, officially endorsed by the goth elite. <laughs> oh, yes, I see yes, Azzy joined the chat. Hey Azzy. Hi. <laughs> All of our friends showed up. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Whole bunch of them. Whole bunch. Y'all are oh, so yeah. supportive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Love mean, you uh, all. Yes, that we do. That we definitely do. I mean, the, the whole uh, 
alternative scene and the goth scene especially is so incredibly welcoming and uh, just generally awesome. So yeah, I highly I, recommend I, Gothic Discord again. <laughs> And I, I love how people in the goth scene and in like the general alternative community and stuff really support each other's like creative projects. It's like we we have our own almost like economy and ecosystem in the goth scene of like uh, just of entertainment, of music, of media, of um, you know goods and services, and it's just so cool to see that kind of like that DIY underground spirit come together. Yep. Yeah. Like here in my city, like we have one goth as a hairdresser, and then we have two who are cobblers, and then we have me and a couple of others who are DJs. Like we got it all. Yeah, and then if you don't have something like that in your local scene, you just <laughs> drop a message in Gothy Discord, and someone somewhere in the world does it. <laughs> yep. Yep. My jewelry is by Josie Ayame. She lives in Belgium, originally from South Africa. She makes some really awesome stuff, as you can see. Yes. I would um... like to point out that Caroline's earrings are guillotines, and that's yeah. about the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, yes. So now, now I want guillotine earrings. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, check out uh, Josie's shop. Indeed, indeed. It's closed right now because she just had a surgery. Um, so she will open back up in, I think, like maybe two months. So it would be awesome yes, if people could welcome Kelly. her back we with some orders. Yes. Also, <laughs> great handmade goth jewelry. Got a shout out, Junkyard Bat, junkyardbat.com. Use code CADAVER to get 10% off at checkout. <laughs> <laughs> this really is an infomercial. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> While we're at it as well, but these are these are real people in the goth scene who uh, this is their like craft, their artisans and their independent crafters who they this this is uh, goods and services by goths for goths, independent yeah. businesses. Uh, and I can give a recommendation for Jess in chat as well, Studio Seven Seven Seven. Uh, yes, fantastic yes. stuff right there. I have right a choker from Jez, and it's so beautiful. I get so many compliments on it. Yep. Yeah, Likewise. I have a harness and belt by her. Not wearing it right now because it would fuck up this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Really? Kelly says, "I hear that Leipzig becomes goth city for Vigite. It really does. Like, imagine a whole city full of goths. Like, there will be like <laughs> thirty thousand goths in Leipzig." Uh, during uh, is it called Pentecost in English? Yeah. Oh my God! It's it's like coming home. Like it's so fun. Like arriving like a day or two before, and then you sit at like an outdoor restaurant, and then you play spot the goths because you, <laughs> you'll see like the city slowly filling up with goths, and then on like Thursday and Friday, it's like all black. It's so cool. All right. And, like, wherever you want to go, like, for, like, if you're seeing a concert at some kind of venue, you have no idea where it is. You just follow the people in black, like, you'll find it. Indeed, indeed. And uh, for anyone curious about our beautiful t-shirts, by the way, that is the link. <laughs> you, too, can be... And the latest gatekeeper, <laughs> Goth Blades. Yes. Yeah. Join the Goth Police Force. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Have the authority to take people's Goth cards anytime. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Freeze. Stop right there. Goth card and record collection, please. <laughs> I will judge you. The the only the only kind of elitist gatekeeper or police I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> precisely, precisely. <laughs> God, yeah, this really became a whole infomercial here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, uh, for those of you who uh, are in the chat, if you haven't noticed, uh, we didn't know exactly what <laughs> what we had uh, planned for this. Uh, this is our our test run pilot episode here. We will bring on a guest next month yes. and have a, um, a more structured topic to discuss. 
Um, we wanted to use this time to kind of introduce ourselves, introduce this this project, and uh, um, kind of get the ball rolling, uh, test out the program we're using for streaming here. Yeah. So I'm going to look in the chat here and see if there's a... <laughs> Right. And for next time as well, I will make sure that all of the alerts is actually properly working, even when my program crashes. <laughs> and Dave's going to make sure that his bots don't kick me out of the chat in yep. Twitch. Yep. Uh, I've already <laughs> done that for you both, actually. I made you mods because that's the easiest way of doing it right now without having to uh, use a bunch of commands. So I'm mod you can now, use spam so away. Respect my authority. <laughs> <laughs> Not <Okay>. police. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do we have anything else so uh, we want to talk about or any questions from uh, the viewers? Or should we just uh, stop talking about it? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I think we brought up everything we intended to talk about for this time, uh, as well as introducing our shenanigans. Yeah, I think we did like what we planned to do. Hi. There's nothing else we think about we missed, right? I don't think so. You who had notes, uh, <laughs> did you write anything else? I didn't bring notes. No. So, uh, well, we introduced ourselves, we introduced the project, we talked a little bit about goth, talked about a little bit about our local scenes, and uh, we talked to some people in the chat. So I would say, all in all, this was a successful uh, pilot and... Uh, test run of our first episode here um so i before we sign off i do want to thank everyone who joined in the live chat thank you so much for tuning in we appreciate all your support we see a lot of our friends in the chat we love you all um and for anyone who's watching this back on youtube thank you as well for watching this back i know that not everyone can join at, during the live recording um and that's understandable uh, lots of uh live streaming events as we mentioned happening these days um so uh yeah just wanted to uh thank everyone and also thanks dave and caroline because i'm excited to to work on this project with both of you likewise yeah. thank you uh, all chat and everyone else kelly caroline thank you all it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun and we'll be trying to do this on a monthly basis around uh, the last sunday-ish uh, every month so uh, i just have more. to say sorry to dj cyberbagan <laughs> he is streaming right now he's having his uh like more chill out sundays around this time so sorry all right then uh, maybe we should uh, send our beautiful people his way then yeah yeah <laughs> let's let's raid his stream all yes. right, right. Raid, raid, so raid. everyone enjoy DJ Cyber Pagan. All right, just Ooh. give me a second and I'll start the beautiful raid. Right, but thank you everyone. Thank you so much for coming by. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll be back soon again. And once again, thank you. Bye. Go to Discord. <laughs>